Thank you. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak here and thank you for like making this program great, at least so far. Uh, so I'm going to start, uh, maybe I'm going to like just first write here what, what I'm going to do. So first I'm going to just talk about right-angled Coxter groups. I'm going to define them and uh, discuss a few examples. Uh, then I'm going to like, um, I'm going to say a few words about what is the, uh, like about examples of properties of groups and combinatorics of defining graphs. So the angled Coxeter groups will be defined by a graph. So there is combinatorics of a graph gamma and corresponding properties. of group that is defined by gamma. And then I'm going to talk about virtual algebraic fib fibering, which is in the title of my talk. And then I'm going to talk about some combinatorial problem that is that corresponds to this property of a group. So I'm going to call it combinatorial game. And in the end, I'm going to show some examples, like some maybe most important examples. OK, so first, uh, let me just give a definition. So if we're given a simplicial gra graph, so simplicial just means that there can be like loops or two edges with the same endpoints. Oh, and yeah, so if. I'm trying to make it like accessible for everyone. There probably will be things that may be like you may like some of you may not know. I'm gonna try to like tell you when it's not important that you don't know something. But if you have any questions, please stop me as much as you want. Uh, okay, so gamma is a simplicial graph and group associated to gamma, the right angled coxer group associated to the graph is given by the presentation whose generators are vertices of the graph. So this is vertices. And uh, for any pair of generators that are joined by an edge, these two generators, OK, so maybe, sorry, first. First, uh, each generator is, uh, generator is of order 2. And then for any two generators, they commute exactly if uh, these two vertices in the graph are joined by an edge. So this is right-angled Coxeter group associated to gamma. So Some like stupid example. Let's just take some random thing, like this graph, for example. Then the presentation will have like four generators. And the relators will be S square, T square, U square, V square. And then for each edge, there is a relator. So S T equals T S, S U equals U S, T U equals U T, and U V equals V U. Um, so maybe some other like more interesting examples. So one like family of examples is if, if we take a gamma complete graph meaning that each two vertices are joined by an edge. So that means that each uh, pair of generators commute. So what we get is just like group on uh, like some number of generators where each two commute. So this is just, uh, pro yeah, this is z mod 2 to the power number of vertices of gamma.
uh, OK, what if we take a graph that has no edges? So like kind of opposite example to this. Then we have, like, we have all our generators, and there are like no relations between them. So then the group is uh, Z mod 2 and free product of, of like as many copies of Z mod 2 as number of vertices of gamma. And the first family of examples I want to discuss, and like I think maybe like the most interesting examples will be reflection uh, reflection groups uh, generated by uh, by sides of right angle polyhedra either in Euclidean space or hyperbolic spaces so that's Okay, this is one word. If you don't know what, what hyperbolic spaces are, it's that's okay. Just think about Euclidean or think about spheres. So, uh, reflection groups of P, where P is a right-angled um, polyhedron in either like in I think I'll just write in R N H N or SN. Uh, so maybe like just so what I mean by right angled, it means that the angle between uh, the like co dimension one faces is uh, right. So for example, if we take n equals two, that means that angle, so we, we're looking at polygons and angle of sides has uh, must be right. So for example, we can take like a square in R2. We have right angles. Or we can take we can take a triangle with right angles on a sphere. There is uh, such a triangle that lives on the S2, which has all angles. 90 degrees, or we can take, for example, uh, how many sides do I draw? Like six, or like I mean, it can be any number, at least five in hyperbolic plane, and those are all right angles. Okay, so those are ex examples in dimension two. Maybe like a few examples in, so yeah, so maybe just, let, let's just write like one presentation, like looking at this. So I'm taking reflection in all sides. So there are like these four sides here. So there's like one reflection here, 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 and here. So we have four generators. They're all of order two. And now we see that if we have like two, like so, so those are re reflection along these lines. And if two lines intersect and they have right angle, because that's what we required, then we, we can see that reflecting A and then B is the same as like going B first and A and then an A. So for each pair that intersect, we have also uh, This kind of relation, and you can you can check that we don't have any other relations. So this is exactly this will be gamma uh, g of gamma, where gamma is also a square. And why is the square? It's just like it's not exactly because this is this was, they were reflections in a square. It's more because like the dual polygon to the square is a square. So for any polygon, dual polygon is always the same kind of polygon, but in higher dimension, we, like we know that like we have a reflection at each side, so that that will be like a that's what what the vertices of gamma correspond to these reflections, and there is an edge if two faces meet at a right angle. So. Right angle. 
right angle? Be yeah. yeah, because th there are right angles. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for n equals three, well, one example would be reflections in uh, planes containing faces of the of the cube. So it, that's in R three. And and then this group of reflections. is a Coxer group, right angle Coxer group of gamma, or gamma is the dual uh, polyhedron. So the polyhedron whose vertices correspond to uh, faces of the cube, and, uh, and there, are like, there is an edge between two vertices if the two faces meet. So the dual of the cube is uh, octahedron. So this group is a group of defined by octahedron. And uh, maybe like one more example would be, maybe let me just write it, uh, dodecahedron, which is another uh, like platonic solid. Uh, do, like, do people know what octahedron is? Like everyone? Everyone knows what the, the decahedron is? OK, so like this can be uh, realized uh, as a polyhedron in H3, like right angled polyhedron. So we can think about uh, reflections in the sides of a uh, dodecahedron as like reflections in this hyperbolic space, which if you don't know it, that's just, it's kind of like Euclidean space, but there is like, <laughs> it just like expands in a different way. Uh, anyway, so we have like, we, we can like, create more examples like this for any uh, right-angled polyhedron that can be realized in either of the three spaces. OK, so um, now let me tell you, let, let's move to the point two. And I'm going to tell you about what is uh, connection between uh, the graph and some algebraic properties of the group, like in general, not only for, for this reflection groups, but in, so, so this will be gamma on this side and G of gamma on this side. And just like a few examples, just like to convince you that there are like a lot of things we can say about right angle Coxer groups just like looking at the graph. So, well, one thing is that like, if we can, uh, if, the, if gamma is, uh, is not connected, so it's like a sum of two connected components, uh, then the group is a free product of the groups corresponding to components. So that's that was like a special case of that, the free product. Another thing is that uh, if gamma is a join of two graphs, where join just means that every vertex in one, if in gamma one is connected to every vertex in gamma two, then the group is a product of gamma, uh, g gamma 1 and g gamma 2. So again, that was uh, the first example was a special case of that. 
And now another uh, example will be uh, what's called flag no square. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so, but we can still like take this property looking at the graph. So there are more things. There are like, I don't know, like, more properties. Like for example, number of ends of G. If you know what that means, that means if not, just don't worry. And we can also detect whether G is, for example, fundamental group of uh, compact hyperbolic free manifold. Just looking at the graph, or also. Uh, also like finite volume, cast hyperbolic man free manifold. So yeah, so there are like a lot of things we can tell about right angled Coxeter group just looking at the graph. And now the property that I'm gonna be interested in, so now I'm moving to point three, is what we call um, virtual algebraic fibering. So we say that a group G, so now it can be any group. Uh, we say that it, the group virtually algebraically fibers if there exists a finite index subgroup of my group G. So that this virtually means finite index subgroup. Uh, and a homomorphism from G prime to Z, or like epimorphism, with a finitely generated kernel. So now let me like try to motivate this definition a little bit. Uh, let me maybe make sure. Are there any questions? That's a good uh, moment to ask. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah. Uh, okay, so so motivation. So if M uh, is closed, connected, uh, oriented. Irreducible free manifold, just think like free manifold. That's nice. Uh, then there is a correspondence. So, uh, okay, so now, like, if I'm saying something that doesn't, like, you don't know what I'm saying, don't worry about it. It's just like kind of to like connect my definition to other stuff. If you don't know this stuff, that's okay. Just like, you just have a definition and think about the definition. So, if M if we have a map from M to S1, then this map is a 
fiber bundle or, or like a surface bundle. If and only if the, the kernel of the homomorphism from induced by this map, so homomorphism from pi 1 of m to pi 1 of s1, which is z, is finally generated. OK, so one way it's kind of easy, like if, I mean, assuming that you know like some basic homotopy th theory, like to go from this to this. But uh, I guess it's not obvious that like just looking at what happens on the level of fundamental groups, you can actually, so, so from getting this kernel of this homomorphism being finally generated, you can actually conclude that this is a surface bundle. But this is important, and like I guess that's what made, like, um, at least that's one thing that made like all this work on free manifolds like so accessible from like geometric group theory point of view. So yeah, so you see that like this condition here is so just uh, that the kernel of a homomorphism of your group to Z is finally generated has this strong like geometric uh, meaning and. Maybe like one more thing to say here is that if we look at like similar problem as this, so like whether you know uh, your manifold fibers or like virtually fibers, if we ask this question about four manifolds, then like it's it's not a good question. So for M four. Uh, so for a for four-dimensional manifold, uh, there just can't be like such a thing that we have a, this fiber bundle. Like, it, like M4 can't be, oh sorry. Uh, l let me just say that like question of like whether manifolds fiber, like that was like a big open question that was like solved by Eagle, which I think was like mentioned in one of the talks a few days ago and like the last part that was left was for like hyperbolic manifolds. So if so now what I'm say, what I want to say is about hyperbolic for manifolds. So if uh, M is a hyperbolic for manifold, then for some like Gauss Bonnet by some Gauss Bonnet computation we know that all the characteristic of M has like is proportional to volume. And if if we had that there is like some three dimensional manifold like some uh, bundle like this so bundle with uh, fiber this three dimensional manifold we know that like all the characteristic of this would have to be product of these two and all the characteristic of this is zero so it's just like this can happen let me just write that it can happen huh yeah so this is yeah this is because sorry this is because uh, M is uh, even dimensional. So, but like, question about, but so this is like, we can say like natural generalization of this question about fibering, for example, for four manifold, that this is what makes sense. And like for any group really, because definition makes sense for any group. So I, yeah, I'm trying to convince you that this is a natural generalization of this question which was a big question. So that's why you should care about it. I hope you're convinced. OK. Uh, let me now move to my, ne my next point, which is this combinatorial criterion. Are there any questions? Because now, if you haven't listened for the first uh, Half an hour, and you want to start? This is a good moment because <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Do you know why they call it play? 
Yeah, so, so like here, if you take the, this uh, graph, yeah. there's like something that's called flat complex, like, uh, yeah, yeah. where you just add all the higher dimensional yeah. simplices. For, so for example, you'd add uh, triangles and like, all, like wherever there is a clique, so like wherever you see like skeleton of a simplex, you add simplex, that's called like flat complex. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so what it's, so what this flag, flag no square means is that like in the flag complex of your graph, there are no squares, like no uh, non, okay. like essential squares, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Any other questions? Thank you for asking. Okay, so yeah, so now just forget about groups. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so I'm just gonna <laughs> write here. I just want to like uh, write what I want to leave on the blackboard on the sides because in the end I want to show you some slides. Okay, so I'm gonna write here. So now we can forget about uh, groups for a moment. And I'm gonna like tell you about this combinatorial game that's on a graph gamma. Okay, so we have a graph, a connected graph, and what we want first is like some starting state. So let me tell you what I mean. So starting state, so state is for each vertex, it's either on or off. So that means that every vertex is on or off. And what I'm gonna do next is like I'm gonna like switch some vertices from on to off or off to on, and I will want some. I will require something from the state that I can get to. So okay, so starting state and now uh, coloring of vertices and. So coloring means that every vertex is colored and no two adjacent vertex vertices have the same color. So what I want, like how I want to think about this coloring is that uh, uh, I can I can switch all the vertices of the same color. So I'm starting, I have like, I'm at some state, so some are on, some are off, and I choose some color and I can switch all of the vertices of this color on if they were off and off, like I just switched to the other position. So that's, that's the setting. And the goal is to, well, to like choose state and choose coloring. So that uh, let me write it on subgraph is connected and non empty. So, what I mean by on subgraph is subgraph generated by all the vertices that are on. And actually, I also want the same for off subgraph. So this like on and off uh, thing is we can like, we actually look at all the uh, sub, like subgraphs induced by vertices. So, uh, and like on and off is really partitioned into two subsets. Uh, and we want two subgraphs generated by those two subsets to be connected and we want this Uh, we wanted to we wanted for all graphs like all states that we can get from just like switching colors so I have some some states some vertices are on and off 
I just like choose some col like some collection of colors. It can be like you know any, like any number of colors, and I switch everything of this color of the colors that I choose. And I want like all this ev like everything that I can get by switching uh, everything of the same color. I want it to be always connected and non-empty for both on and off. I want I want to choose both. I, so like I'm at really I'm asking if the rest sustain and coloring. So okay, so like just let's start with some very simple example just to make sure that you know what I'm talking about. So let gamma be graph that looks like this. And I'm just going to like write some colorings and some state. So I can color this graph using three colors. That's like the lowest number. So I can color this two in the same color. So they are blue. And the two other vertices are uh, adjacent to all others. So they have to like have uh, unique colors. OK, so this is an example of a coloring. And now if I look at state, starting state that I'm going to use white for on, and or maybe I'm going to note it like this. So one side is on, the other side is off. And now you can try to play a little bit to see, like for example, what happens if I switch blue. If I switch blue, then th these two are blue, so this becomes uh, off, or and this was off, so it becomes on, and all other vertices like remain the same. So I get this. Oh, and so maybe I didn't like emphasize here that like in this state we see that like this is subgraph generated by off and this is subgraph generated by on, so they're both connected. Here again, this is connected, this is connected. So it's good and you can also, you can check all other colors and like combination of colors and this is, uh, this is gonna work. Like all the states that I can get by switching colors here will be always uh, non-empty, uh, the, the subgraphs will be non-empty and con connected. So this is, so maybe let me just write that uh, we call it a legal system. So the, this, uh, this choice of state and coloring with that property, we call it a legal system. So this is an example this of legal system. You can check. And maybe like a non-example. I mean, uh, well, for example, here, if you start with, for the same graph, if we start from other graph, so for example, wait. Yeah, like, let's start from this graph. This one state is fine, right? This is one subgraph and it's connected. This is other one is connected. But if I change yellow color, then what I get is this, where one subgraph is connected, but the other one is not. So this is. Like, I mean, the system. So like, I guess, like, by system, I mean choose of state and coloring. Yeah. So yeah, this is, this is not good. This is not what we want. So let me just like mention that really, we consider something slightly more general than this coloring here. But I'm not going to tell you what unless you ask me later. But for like, this you should think about. OK. 
So maybe one more example, a little more interesting. So another example is if we take as gamma a cube, uh, then we can color vertices using two colors. So the, the one skeleton of the cube is uh, bipartite. So this is uh, one color and this is another color. And now now if I take a state like this, then first thing let's see that the graphs are connected. This is one graph and let me use blue for to draw here another graph. And uh, should I draw it? Okay, let me just draw like what happens when I apply one of the colors. So for example, red. So if I change all the vertices that are red, then this becomes uh, this becomes off, and this becomes on, this becomes on, and all others are the same. I guess you just have to like look at it to yourself to convince yourself that this is right. But I just want to like show you that the state that I get from here is kind of similar. It looks the same. It's just like up to some uh, automorphism of this cube. So this is another example. And in fact, this is really an example that uh, would work for any cube any in any dimension, like something similar. Uh, and what's interesting about this example is that, well, we mentioned before that, like, so the cube is dual polyhedron to octahedron, and octahedron, I don't know if I said that before, but octahedron can be uh, realized as, uh, as ideal uh, right-angled hyperbolic polyhedron. So ideal meaning that it has vertices on the boundary uh, so the reflection group that corresponds to this, to this ideal octahedron in hyperbolic space, uh, uh, well, we, we, we see that it's, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll come back to this in a moment. Let me just uh, tell you now what's the connection. Because I told you about this combinatorial game and now it's time to explain you Oh, also, I forgot to say in the beginning, I should have, that like everything I'm talking about is joint work with Danny Weiss and Sergey Norin. So at least I'm going to write their names now. Uh, so if graph gamma admits a legal system, then the group associated to the graph virtually algebraically fibers. And I'm not really going to talk about uh, why, but I'm just going to write one, one thing, which is this spin up Brady Morse theory is what is used here. And if you want to know about it or know more, if you already know something about it and like how we use it, uh, ask me later. I'd be like very happy to talk about it. Um, okay, so 
the whole point of like playing this game is to get our uh, virtual algebraic vibration. And coming back to this example, let me just write a bit more. So the, this group, the, this Coxter group associated to this graph, as I said, is like the reflection group of the uh, ideal hyperbolic uh, octahedron. And there is uh, some, it has some finite index subgroup that is like, that is a, a free manifold group. So like you, you can like take some number of this octahedra in hyperbolic plane and like glue them. It will be cast hyperbolic free manifold, but you can see that like this is an example of what I was telling you about like how you can use our theorem for some free manifold group to show that it fibers and fibers in this geometric meaning because of uh, what we said before. So this is, but, I mean, but this is already known that like all this manifold fibers. So, but uh, this is an example of for for this particular uh, group. So this is reflection group of ideal right angled hyperbolic octahedron. Uh, okay. A and maybe I should just mention that there are examples of uh, of free man like reflection groups that uh, who have like finite index subgroups that are free manifold groups for which this approach doesn't work. So it's not that good. And now I want to show you some more examples and I want to show you slides. Slides, please. This is a 24, one skeleton of a 24 cell. So a 24 cell is a four dimensional polytope, like regular polytope, regular convex polytope. So it's kind of like platonic solid, but one dimension higher. And uh, what I want to tell you about it. So, so yeah, it's 24 because it's built out of 24 octahedra that I don't know if you can see in this picture, but you can, there are probably things that kind of look like octahedra. And it can be realized as an ideal right angled four dimensional hyperbolic uh, polytope. So, you, uh, and so, so again, like this is, uh, there is like some four manifold hyperbolic four manifold that can be like obtained from from twenty four cell, and uh, it's self dual. Like so, the dual uh, polytope it's itself. So he, for four dimensional polytopes, dual is like there is a vertex for each three dimensional uh, face. So for each of the octahedra here, and. This is another picture, so it's not the whole thing, but we start, like, the way like, you can construct this 24 cell, you start with four cube, which is the black graph. Each of the three cubes that you have in the four cube, you add an extra vertex, which is the red vertex. I only have one in the picture, but think about it that you have one in all of the cubes, also in this like, cube that is outside, I guess. And uh, so we can also see where this octahedra are here. So, it, so here, like this part, this red vertex and this square here is like half of an octahedron. So the other half would be like, coming from the verte red vertex that would be in a cube uh, below. So, uh, 
So we can find a legal system on this graph. And it's kind of uh, described here. So one part, so we have one color is white, one color is black, and one color is red. So we have three colors. And uh, And uh, well, do you have it? Oh yeah, I have it. Uh, and this will be the beginning state. There are no red vertices here. For red vertices, you can really choose whatever you want. They can be either on or off. It doesn't matter. But uh, you can. I think it's pretty easy to like convince yourself that this is a legal system. So yeah. So this is an example. This uh, 24 cell gives an example to four dimensional hyperbolic manifold uh, that algebraic, virtual, like algebraically fibers. And I still have a few minutes. So let me show you another example. So we have two other four dimensional uh, convex regular polyhedra. I mean, we have few more than this. Uh, but this is 120 cell and this is 600 cell. And they are dual to each other. So uh, 120 cell um, is the, it can be also realized as a like in a hyperbolic space. So as a right angled, and in this case, compact uh, four dimensional hyperbolic polyhedra. And so gamma is the graph corresponding to the Coxter group. Uh, that's uh, generated by reflection in uh, 120 cell. And there is also some complicated way that is, I mean, it's simple for how like 600 cell, like 600 cell is very complicated, but there is like some very simple way of thinking about it, which is kind of described here. Uh, I guess I'm not really gonna tell you in details what it is, but if, I mean, unless you want, I guess I can tell you. Like, so you start with this like grid that is really a torus where you have like edges as like in this uh, part in the beginning. And then you have like extra vertices, like the blue ones here that are like in each of the rows. And you have extra vertices with these edges that are like corresponding to each of the uh, columns. And this happened to be uh, one skeleton of 600 cell which you can verify by looking at um, looking at one vertex and what's around like all the vertices that are adjacent. And it also happens that somehow we managed to, I mean, I guess it's mainly Sergey Norin, who's a combinatorialist. Uh, we met, like, managed to find a legal system, so like coloring, which is, has like 20 something colors. Uh, that yeah, that gives you a legal system. So this is another example. So this this is corresponds to a right angled Coxter group, who's uh, who has finite index subgroup that is a four uh, manifold hyperbolic four manifold group. In this case, compact for four manifold that algebraically fibers. And uh, yeah, I'll stop here. <laughs> <laughs>